Hello, and welcome to this brief overview of AP Calculus AB at, here at Brebuff Jesuit. I'm Mr. Franklin, one of the current AP Calc teachers here at Brebuff. Uh, we're going to, in this video, we're just going to kind of quickly go through some information that might help you make a more informed decision for your courses next year, your math course next year. So what is calculus? That's one of the most common questions we get. And calculus really is just the study of rate. So it's the mathematical study of rate. So we get this rich, robust, you know, subject called calculus that really is just the study of rate. It's a year-long course here at Burbuff. You take an AP exam in early May, and you have to do well on that AP exam to potentially earn credit for the first course in proof-based calculus at whatever university you're looking to go to. The curriculum is not set by us, it's set by the College Board, but we do add a few topics to make the transition to the second semester of proof-based calculus a little bit easier for students that move on to that course. Students that take this course are students that are looking to earn a college degree in a science or math heavy area like math, engineering, computer science, physics, actuarial science, there's lots. Um, students that take this course are also very comfortable uh, with standardized exams and do well on standardized exams. Remember, this is an AP course with an AP exam in early May uh, that determines whether you earn credit or have the potential to earn credit uh, at your respective university. Now, if that doesn't sound like you, if oh, I don't know about that, I'm, I'm not going into those areas of study or I don't do so well in standardized exams, that's okay. That's why we offer another calculus course here at Rebuff called ACP Calculus that's not an AP course and you can earn college credit through that course without taking um, an AP exam in May. So students that sign up for this, what can they expect? Well, uh, lots of practice. So practice does uh, make permanent and practice is a way that people learn, ask any professional athlete. Um, so we do have practice sets that are assigned at the end of almost every single class meeting. Um, you can also expect that you'll need to devote some time during the day to work on your schoolwork. So PRTs and breaks, the expectation is you're using some of that to keep up on your coursework uh, in this course. So hopefully you have to do no more than 30 minutes of work outside of school for this particular course, if you're using time during the day. Now, if our course falls, if the period you meet falls at the end of the day, obviously you'll have to spend a little bit more time outside on that particular day uh, working on the coursework. Uh, we do assign AP problems along with the coursework. So there's always that AP exam we're working towards. And the expectation is since there's no formulas provided to you on the AP exam, you've got to keep up with everything we're doing. You got to remain current with all our coursework throughout the year, which you should be doing in any course, but for this one, it's even more important. Um, and then tests are a little bit more challenging in this course because the test questions are similar to those found on the AP exam. Uh, students that are successful in this course, they stay current with their work. They don't procrastinate. They don't get behind. Uh, they use the practice sets as a tool to learn, and they're not in the mindset that it's just a task that was assigned that needs to be completed that works against learning. Uh, they attempt to figure out things on their own instead of just saying they don't know how to do it and then come running for help from someone else. Uh, what we're really trying to teach you here is how to, how to learn. So use your resources and try to figure out things on your own first before you go consult someone else. Uh, students that are successful also uh, teach their classmates that are struggling, and they work together to gain that understanding. Uh, they attend the AP exam review sessions in the spring, and then even after getting admitted to their university, they remain committed to doing well on that AP exam. Those are those typically students that do well in this course. They uh, they exhibit all those traits listed there. Now, what do students find challenging? Well. Uh, half the AP exam is short answer, and you have to provide clear, uh, mathematically true statements to earn the points. There's also over 50 formulas you have to know and where they came from. Uh, you have to be very comfortable with Algebra 1, Algebra 2, and pre-calculus skills, including trigonometry. Um, you have to be comfortable on your graphing calculator, since half the AP exam is done on the graphing calculator. Um, again, keeping up with that coursework. Uh, it can be challenging, but it, it's necessary to do well. And then, again, remaining motivated even after you've made it through the college selection process and you know where you're going. Uh, well, what about that AP exam in May? Well, it's early May. Um, half the exam is multiple choice. The other half is free response. Free response, you've got to earn those points. You have to justify all your answers using clear mathematically true statements, which a lot of students struggle with. Um, you know, you've, you've got to write down, everything's got to be true. 
And it should be a clear and logical argument as to why you got the answer that you got. Um, it does require the graphing calculator, which might be new to you for the course. And then like all AP exams, the scores range from a one to five with a five being our goal, because that's what's going to most likely earn you um, credit at your respective university. So uh, these are just the highlights. Of course, if you have any questions about the course, come visit us in the math office. We'd love to talk to you. Thanks.